What's cracking guys? How's it going? How are you all doing? I am in a brand new Civic Type R FK8 and I'm having a blast. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and preface the fact that uh, hopefully you guys can hear me, hopefully the audio is good. Um, I have a little mic right here, so hopefully this all works out. Anyways guys, I am on my way back to uh, technically home base where I picked up the car. Uh, this isn't actually my car, it is my buddy Dave's uh, at IamRacerX on Instagram. I'll have his information below. Um, he gave me a call and he basically said, hey, ITR Expo is Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, I want to bring both my cars. Uh, will you help me uh, drive your, my, essentially, will you help me drive my FK8? And I was like, absolutely. So started this day off, drove to uh, Sacramento, which is halfway to Willows, which is Thunder Hill. That's where NSX and ITR Expo was. And uh, hopped in this car. First time I've ever driven it. Technically second, I drove it around the block a couple a couple times just to you know feel it out. But actually driving it, I've got about like I got my first hour in on the track. Then while we were at the track, uh, I went out with him for probably a total combined time of probably about 45 minutes of track time, which was great. Um, so a couple key points: when I turn on the car, essentially it, it starts you in sport mode, which is awesome because it's just like Honda wants you to have fun. Um, after about 40 minutes of driving the car, I did realize, oh yeah, there are other modes. So I wanted to check that out, right? So right here on the right, you flick down, boom, you're in comfort mode. Everything on the dash turns white and you kind of just know like you're in leisure mode, right? The power is still there. The torque curve is still there. Just as fun to drive. It does feel a lot more floaty, but not floaty in a bad way, just more so like you know, you're driving more of a uh, luxurious kind of car. Uh, flicking back up one, you go into sport mode. One more time, you go into R mode. Everything turns red. You are now in a sports car and it definitely feels it. The suspension gets way more firm and it's just more fun to drive. I feel like it's a little bit more peppier. You feel the turbo kick in a little quicker. Um, it's an awesome car. And I'm sure as you're watching this, you're like, okay, cool. This is gonna be a biased video. Your name is Honda Vlogs, you're a Honda guy. You're obviously just gonna love the car. You're right, I love the car. I really don't have anything really bad to say about the car. Um, I'm sure if I owned the car more, I could give you some more impressions, but this is literally just right out of the box what I like. First off, the looks. Definitely looks futuristic. It's definitely a Type R. And being at ITR Expo, you can kind of tell, because I was driving here, essentially behind a early ITR and then an NSX. The bar headlights, they matched up. It looked really nice. You can kind of see the comparison there. FK8, back end looks a little weird, right? You don't really know what's going on. The front looks mean, it just looks bigger. You know what? And here's the thing. My impression is I really do think the Civic Type R is maybe the look is a little ahead of the game as to where Honda really wanted it to be. But we look at the car like maybe three, five years down the road, it's gonna look like an older car, but it's gonna at least stay relevant visually. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know how it is. Aside from that, daily driving this car, I think would be an amazing opportunity if you had the chance to buy. I know the price point is up there, you know, 40, 45, almost 50K at times. When they came out, people were gouging you, trying to get it, you know, a couple over MSRP, and by a couple over, like maybe five, 10, some were crazy when they first came out, but you can get them now. And you know what? If you can get one close to MSRP, personally, I think it would be a great buy. As a daily commuter, it was great. On the way to the track, we had everything in the trunk. Uh, the seats down, we had actually a DC2 full auto power roll bar in the back. I mean, that's awesome, right? You got room in the back if you have a family, plenty of space. If you don't have a family, you still want a four-door, this is the car for you. Honestly, um, out of the lineup, I get the price point. Maybe you want to go for the SI. If you want to get the Type R, I definitely think it's worth it. It's just way roomier. You have a lot more options. The suspension settings are nice. The power delivery is great for a daily commuter. You still get the six speed, all the luxuries. You're sitting right now in a bucket seat. Uh, I'm like maybe five, six, 160, I fit perfect. There's plenty of room here. When we were on the track, I slid around a little bit, not gonna lie, but we were also chucking it. So 
but you got to admit this is literally just you know an out of the box ready to go daily driver that can go to the track and i can confirm today it absolutely can go to the track so we were at thunder hill had a blast um i didn't get to drive it i wasn't a driver i went out as a passenger so there's that i'll go ahead and throw that in there but you know what not much was passing the car we were out there with a lot of nsx's a lot of nsx's drivers didn't want to push their cars this was like more of an uh, an expo you know it's nsx expo you're out there you just want to take your car for a drive uh learn it a lot of people was the first time taking their nsx on the track probably a lot of people's first time at a track i would assume i don't know um the only other cars that were actually flying by us was the Honda fk8 which was awesome really fast on slicks and also they had the pikes peak nsx giving rides to all the nsx owners that were registered amazing car also on slicks huge wing new nsx insanely fast it sounds crazy um i talked to a couple people i think the only differences were they have uh, stock turbos uh when they did pikes peak they actually had bigger turbos because of the air is thinner out there you need a little bit more power to compensate but the type r did amazingly well on the track super grip i actually drank a lot of water so i had a lot of water in my stomach and uh, there was a certain part after like i think i think it's turn 10 at thunder hill uh where you have to do like a hard left a hard right and a hard left i literally felt water sloshing in my stomach i literally looked over to dave and i was like this car is gripping so much i feel like my internals are moving it's it's uh it's really great the torque steer in this car is almost non-existent it is a front wheel drive car everybody expects there to be torque steer if you've been following the FKA CTR, you know that there's been a lot of technology built into the front of the car to kind of eliminate a good portion of the torque steer. And I really feel coming from a front wheel drive driver that they actually did a really, really good job eliminating a lot of the torque steer. Now you can get on it, the turbos kick in, you do feel a little bit like, whoa, but it's nothing crazy, you know, it just kind of feels like uneven pavement or something like that, where you're just kind of like, you know, on the freeway, like, oh, it's kind of bumpy. Let me just make sure, you know, this goes on. That You can just drive through it, right? Like I said, zero torque steer, little to none. Maybe not zero, but little to none. The power delivery, super linear. It's not like the turbos kick in on like a K20 or a B16 with the turbo where you're just like, hold on. Uh, the power delivery is very, very nice. Right now, I'm literally in sixth, 2,500 RPMs just cruising down the freeway and this is honestly if you're going to do this daily driving this car this is an amazing car right but like i said if you need to slam on this car and you're trying to just boogie that is an awesome that is something else this car can do and i'm really really happy about that on the way here we were actually able to have to you know cut around traffic we were trying to get to the track we only had like an hour to get there we weren't smashing you know what i mean uh, you know what i mean but a couple times, a couple people got in front of me. I don't understand that. You know what? Have you ever been driving with a group of car, like all of the same cars, but someone decides like, oh, let me just get in the middle of you instead of getting behind you. You know, why, why do people do that? I don't understand. But, you know, sometimes we had to pass somebody and very quickly just drop a gear, maybe drop another gear. If you're going really, uh, you know, like going about 60 miles an hour, drop in a gear, boom, instant power delivery, having a lot of fun back to the track insane amount of grip i'm really happy about it uh i'm not sure on the tire specs but they are ce28s on this car uh basically replicating uh the same height didn't really mess with the geometry of the car but it all it isn't on 20s anymore uh but the height wise everything stayed the same <laughs> yeah at four grand this car literally comes alive you have a lot more room to play but as soon as you hit about 4k whoo it just kicks in and literally you're having a blast anyway so we're on the track turns are doing great there's an nd miata it was supercharged it had olins not a problem eating it up crs 2000 kept keeping the line in the CTR, you don't really want to mat it. You just want to keep your foot on the brake. I'm sorry, keep your foot on the gas and just give it a little bit, let off a little bit. You just want to give it a consistent pressure. You don't want to mat it because the the thing, the trick with this car is it, 
the power is delivered so well, you just want to keep it on the road. You just want to keep the power planted the whole way through. CRS 2000, not a problem. Certain NSXs, not a problem. I'm sure if the NSXs were set up perfectly and the driver knew exactly what they were doing, yes, obviously there would be a problem. Thunder Hill East uh, is a longer track. It's very nice. It allows your NSX or your car to actually stretch its legs. So, you know, you have that. The CTR performed extremely well. I was really happy to be in the car. Just like, wow, the grip is great. The power delivery is awesome. Uh, the brakes, these are stock brakes. I think he's running Winmax pads, so it's a bit more aggressive pad. And you know what? You give it a little bit, car slows down, chuck it into a turn, get on the gas, and you're out. It's still a front-wheel drive car, guys. You still have that fun and just that ability to toss it around. You know, it's not a DC2, it's not a Del Sol, it's definitely not an EF, but it is a, like, it is a modern Honda. They're all the things you get with that modern Honda. But at the same time, you still feel it in the power delivery. You still feel it in the steering. It's light. The electronic steering is precise. You have a lot of fun while you're driving this car. The value is there is basically what I'm trying to say. If you're really considering buying one of these cars and you're like, wow, the price point is just too much. It's not worth it. The Type part isn't worth the money. Uh, I really beg to differ because it has everything you would want. You know, if you've had your DC2s, if you've had your S2000, if you are lucky enough to get an NSX, uh, there's a happy medium, I believe. There's somewhere in between the S2000 and the NSX, the CTR delivers. The price point, you know what? It's most likely, in my opinion, there's probably some hype price. You know, it's the first time we've actually had a Type R in the US in a while, since like the DC2. So it's just kind of like, all right, there's gonna be a price point there. But um, I don't double check me on this, but I'm pretty sure Honda doesn't really make an insane amount of money on all of their Type Rs. Their Type R lineage and genres of their cars, they delivered the best of the best they could for that platform. And I truly believe that Honda did that for this car, you know? And I'm obviously a Honda guy, I'm a Honda enthusiast, and I really do believe that while Honda had to play around with emissions in the early on uh, days of delivering cars to the US, I really feel that Honda's passion is obviously racing. And being that, they wanted to deliver everything to their enthusiast, and they just, this is my opinion, but I've always felt that Honda legitimately gave us whatever we wanted in different packages, knowing that the true enthusiasts were gonna go after that. You know what I mean? The EG was one of the best platforms we ever had. Once the K-Series came out, people were putting the K-Series in the EGs, and instantly it was an awesome car, you know? Uh, we wanted street legal turbos. We couldn't get those. Gretti was making them in the early 90s, early S2, not S2000s, the early 2000s, and uh, you know that went away edelbrock for a while was making superchargers and then that went away well acura allowed for a lot of other options right acura gave us the k series we were able to get that engine from the acuras we wanted turbos honda made the rdx the rdx allowed essentially kind of like a k series with a turbo so now we have a legal turbo in the states you know what i mean and the type r legitimately was like cool we have all of those wheels in place years later. Now, we have this motor with a turbo. We have so much technology to the front wheels that we don't even have torque steer anymore. And on top of that, we have four doors. So we appeal to a bunch of different crowds, right? You have the younger generation. I'm 33, obviously I don't own this car. I would love to own this car, but this is definitely going after my uh, demographic of people, right? We're early 30s, thinking of families, thinking of having them. And this is obviously like, hey, how do I get my sports car, but still convince my, you know, my loved ones or my, my wife or my kids like, hey, I'm going to get this sports car. I got two seats in the back. Let's rip. And on the weekends, it's a race car, right? So I'm going to the track. There's a lot I actually like about this car. Um, and it's some things I actually kind of don't like. One of the main things I actually don't like is the electronic e-brake. I really miss just pulling up on an e-brake. I'm never gonna get used to this. Uh, my buddy's CRV also has this button. It's really weird. You can hold it, you can lift it up, you can set it. It's weird, I don't get how it works. I really wish Honda would've just given us an e-brake. 
when you do the uh, calipers in the back, I think you have to do something where you disengages the, uh, the motor for the rear brake so that you can do that. Seems a little excessive. I wish we could have just had a normal e-brake. I don't know what they were doing. Not gonna hate it though, but I do wish I just had a normal, a normal e-brake. As far as the UI of the car, it's really nice. The dash is awesome. I love this wheel. It feels really good in the hands. It's a little thicker on top. You have these holes down at the bottom. You have all the radio controls at your thumb. All of this dash is within reach. Like I said, I'm literally only like 5'6", not a big dude. I can totally reach everything I want right here within an arm's grasp. Everything seems really efficient. Whoever designed the UI here did a really, really good job. I don't have to look over and figure out like a bunch of random things like what does this button do? What does that button do? I know there's other cars that try to like oversimplify this, but Honda did a really good job at making everything just accessible to your hands. You can basically reach, tap a button, have something done. You want to turn the AC on? I got you. You know what I mean? That's, that's Essentially, that's everything you want. The dash here, obviously, doesn't have too much. You have your gas on the right. You have your temperature on the left. You do have a temp gauge right here on the far right that will pop up if the temp goes up. Going back to the track, that's actually something we noticed. The Gen 1 FK8s did have an issue with heat soak. That is actually something they're addressing, I believe, in the second version of the CTR, and it's a true thing. There's a lot of heat soak you deal with. If you take this car and you push it really, really hard, <laughs> oh, I love downshifting in this car, it's great. But yeah, if you push this car on the track, you will see the temp gauge go up. Not actually like super high, but you do have cooling issues. Uh, I know there's a bunch of companies right now. Obviously, Spoon has a radiator. I believe there's another couple companies creating radiators for this. Um, there's a couple intercoolers that are out now to kind of alleviate a lot of the cooling issues. But you know what? Like I said, daily driving, having fun on the street, taking people around, getting to work in style, having fun, you'll never have an issue. You wanna take it to the track, do a couple hard laps, take a cool down lap, take a couple hard laps, take a cool down lap, won't really have an issue. If you're buying this car as a track car that you can also daily, you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider getting some cooling upgrades, you know? An oil cooler, uh, intercooler, and a radiator. Help the cooling system out, it's a known issue. They are working on it, and I think that's one of the major things they're gonna address in the next revision. Aside from that, like I said, everything here in the UI is incredibly simple. You basically have your miles per gallon right here, your average fuel consumption, just a gauge it's moving as you're on and off the throttle the entire time. A very good font. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge font guy, but I do actually like this. It's legible, it's very nice on the eyes. You got how long you have left on the fuel gauge. I'm sure there's other options. I haven't even played with it. Like I said, this is just like first off driving it. But other than that, that's literally all you need. I'm super content driving this car. I would love to own one myself. If I could just sell all of my cars and just have this car, I might do it. I'd probably keep a Civic because you gotta love the B-Series or a K-Series or something like that. If you're a Honda guy, you obviously just wanna have something swappable to tinker with. This is an adult car that you can still tinker with. But like I said, end game car, everyday driver that you can take to the track, I 100% endorse the Honda CTR FKA platform. I think it's amazing. It looks great. I've seen them with TEs. This has CE28s on it. You can still modify the car. It's a new platform. Companies are definitely gonna come out with products for it. You don't have to buy this car thinking, oh, there's no aftermarket support. You're wrong. There are so many companies still developing for this car. It's still technically brand new. There's a lot of people trying to figure out its little quirks and things like that. So I'll say it again, guys. I would 100% buy this car. If you're on the fence and you happen to actually be watching this video, go test drive one. Go home, think about it. Go test drive another one. And then think to yourself, you know what? Do you want a car that's just gonna run functionally, put a smile on your face, be actually really good on gas and safe to haul around your family? Then yeah, I would go with this car. Aside from that, if you want it just for a track car, absolutely. 
super fun. I'm so excited that I was actually able to go on the track a few times in this car. So with that said, guys, I don't want to go over too much stuff and bore you. If you have questions or you want to pick my brain about my ideas or my thoughts on the car, leave the questions down below. I'll definitely answer everybody. If you like this, share it anywhere you want. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, guys. I got a bunch of more content I'm trying to get out to you guys. Like I said, share it to any groups. I know I'm a Honda guy. I know it's a, a little bit biased, but you know what? This car is for a niche crowd, and I think it will pull other people that aren't considering this into Hondas because it offers a lot you know if you look at the price point and you compare it to other cars sure you look at Honda and you're like ah eh, Honda for the money I don't know guys I definitely think it's worth it like I said guys I'll talk to you next time thanks for sticking with this like subscribe leave a comment below I'll get back to you guys I'll see you in the next one peace